Welcome back, friends. Glad to have you back for more of our Holy Week content leading up to Easter. Uh, today, I'm joined by Lucas Parks, um, our mission minister, and uh, excited to have you here, man. Thanks so much for uh, helping shed some light on this topic of, of Monday Thursday. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, this this is an interesting um, phrase and also just like kind of topic to discuss a little bit because I remember as a kid, I was always confused by this this phrase, Monday Thursday. Like, is it Monday Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely excited to hear from someone smarter than me about this, uh, this important day. So, um, yeah, let's get into it a little bit. Um, maybe even give us some context and background as to, did you celebrate this, this day in the past? Was this something that was a part of your kind of Christian history? Not in the U S yeah. um, when I was back in, in Ireland, um, it definitely is a much more, a part of, uh, Holy Week celebrations. Um, and that might just be because there's more liturgical churches there. Right. And even churches that are are maybe not high church, mm -hmm. I think maybe uh, have maybe more of an awareness of kind of a, a church calendar in that sense. And so, and, and because uh, the Church of England does celebrate that, yeah. the Queen of England kind of being the head of the church, there's uh, ceremonies and things that she does and giving money to the poor on that day that gets televised. And so okay. it's kind of in the more general, I think, public knowledge of what oh, Monday, yeah. Thursday is. Interesting. Know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, you, you're from, well, you're kind of from Ireland, but you're also kind of from the United States. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I, I didn't really grow up in the evangelical church with this being kind of a big part of our, our rhythm. Yeah. Uh, the more I learned about it, the, the more I wish it kind of had. Yeah. It's certainly a, a great opportunity to slow down and, and stop and think about some important things. What is it? Tell us more about what is this idea of Monday Thursday? Why is it called that? And, and why is it important for us? Well, um, without getting too nerdy, uh, it, it comes from the Latin term, which a lot of these, you know, kind of uh, uh, rituals and, and observances do from uh, the term mandatum. Um, so it gets anglicized into Monday. Uh, it's where we get our English word mandate from. And it literally in Latin means a command hmm. or a law. Okay. Um, and so... Really, Monday Thursday is looking you know at the events of Holy Week. It's really week. It's tied to uh, Jesus's last time with his disciples as a whole, hmm. um, the the upper room, the Last Supper, him washing their feet, and really this command, this new command I give to you, and that's where we get the the word Monday from, that Latin word of command uh, from John thirteen. Um, I give you this new commandment, um, you know, that you're to to love one another. Oh. So. The day really kind of leads us um, as Christians to to think through the events of that day, the implications of that uh, uh, for us now yeah. as disciples, as as the disciples had implications, uh, the actual twelve disciples mm -hmm. uh, did. So, what does that mean for us now? And it leads us into thinking through some of those things and help help shape us. And I, I do think, mm. uh, you know whether you're low church, high church, mm. somewhere in between, you know, I think a church calendar can be helpful. Um, I, it can be unhelpful. I mm. think at times mm. if it's just ritualistic and sure. it's, yeah. we don't really think this through and we're kind of on autopilot, but I think there are, there are ways that a church calendar can help us as, as, uh, Christians, uh, think through certain times of, of the year in more deeper, meaningful ways, mm. um, rather than just a, a one-off, Hey, today's Easter. And then we kind of move on right. or oh, today's Christmas. And so, Things like Lent or Holy Week or Advent, you know, kind of help prepare our hearts and, and guide us and direct us in our walk with Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think about that that scene in John 13 you're talking about and just kind of going back to that a little bit. I think that's an interesting just experience or kind of last moment to think about. First of all, I'm assuming as I read this passage in John 13, 34, that it's almost like. Jesus' last words to his disciples, kind of yeah. his last final words yeah. before he goes to the cross. And yeah, that certainly adds a level of gravitas to like, hey, what am I going to say that's really going to stick? That's kind of like, what are the last things you're going to say? It makes me think about, you know, last moments that I've had with whether it's family members before they've yeah. passed away or, and, and yeah, so it's, there's a heaviness, but there's also a sense of, hey, I want to give you some hope and direction moving forward. Yeah. And I think that's really helpful because, yeah, thinking about last words, you kind of have to wonder, you know, why is the idea of loving one another so so poignant, so important for Jesus to remind the disciples of? You know, what is it about that moment? And yeah, what are your reflections on that? Well, earlier, like he actually tells them, this is how people know that you're my disciples. Yeah. Like the mark of someone who's following Jesus according to Jesus, is the world will look and see your love for one another. Mm. Not even your love for the world, although that's part of that, but like how we actually behave in the family of God to one another. 
And, uh, you know, when we look at the disciples, they're, they're jockeying for position. Who's yeah. going to sit at your right hand and who's going to, you know, they send their mom in to ask, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> like there's like, who's, who's, That's there's funny. who's the pecking order here. And yeah. they're, well, you know, even Peter like, well, what about John? And Jesus is like, don't worry about John. Like I, I've called you to something. And so, uh, and I, I think we're the same. Like uh, nothing has changed. Paul writes to the Corinthians and they're like, well, I belong to Apollos and the P you know, right. it, it, and we still do the same thing today. Yeah. Like we want to be around power. We want to be around influence. We want to be around uh, all these things that we can gather around ourselves that really are about us and serving yeah. ourselves. If, if we're honest and that's just not the way of Jesus. Jesus is like, so much so that he he's he he himself is going to wash their feet. Even Judas, who's going to betray him, like yeah. gets his feet washed. And and so there's this act of intimacy, this act of humility that Jesus puts on display um, uh, in this upper room, and then ultimately, you know, uh, the next the next day on the cross, that I just think is so countercultural to us. So you know, we talk about love, we talk about loving each other and serving each other. And yet this act of like washing feet, mm -hmm. um, which I think it gets disconnected for us. Yeah, we all yeah. wear shoes. Right. We have socks. Like, you know, we have showers. Like, uh, you know, feet aren't as gross as they used to mm -hmm. be. Although I wear flip-flops a lot and they're grosser than when I used to wear shoes right, in Ireland right. a lot. But yeah, you have to be careful. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been like other cultures. So, you know, in the Middle East, you know. Uh, you I, you remember when the Gulf War happened? They were like throwing shoes and like hitting yeah. statues with shoes because it's hitting like George such Bush a, with shoes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's such a dishonorable right, thing, right? You know, uh, if you go to Thailand, like you have to take your shoes off before you go into a temple, and you have to like kneel in a way that your feet aren't pointing toward Buddha. Like, so I think we kind of get disconnected from that. But in that Near East kind of culture, you know, feet were gross. Mm. But it was also an act of hospitality. So when, when you went to someone's house, there was a, the host would, would you know, have, have a, a way for you to wash your feet and kind of refresh yourself. Right. So I don't think it's the foot washing that stands in stark contrast in the supper. It's the fact that it's Jesus himself yeah. who takes off his garment, puts on a towel, mm -hmm. kneels down, and it, this intimate moment of washing their feet. And, and you even see Peter recoil from that. Mm -hmm. well, don't wash my feet, Jesus. Like, I, and, and not, you're above this sort of thing. And he's like, I'm not. I'm right. not above this. Like, this is what I'm calling you to, um, is to lay down your pride, <laughs> lay yeah. down your yeah. life um, for the sake of others. I love that he encapsulates this idea, kind of both and of, hey, a new commandment uh, I give to you, love one another. So oftentimes what, how we show love, at least kind of in my context, in my history, is I'll just say that out loud. I'll just say, hey, I love you. Yeah. And, and, and in some ways that's, kind of the easiest way I mean depending on how comfortable you are with with expressing that but it's easy just to say those words but the both and comes in in power where Jesus says and I'm going to also practically serve you and yeah. kind of show you what love means and so um, yeah that that meant you know the idea you just mentioned a, a kind of a rabbi a teacher someone above them spiritually serving them but also there's this element of as you just talked about feet were gross yeah they were like there's this is practical i'm gonna help you in the next for the next few hours your feet are gonna be clean yeah and that's not the norm for you on a normal day so um really cool idea of syncing up you know the commandment of love to the practicality of love too well, i think we're you know unfortunately there's uh you know an element of, of the church that has leaders that want to be in an ivory tower or they want to have sure. like the best of this and there's this detachment and that's just so not the way of jesus um you know, Paul goes out of his way in, in Philippians to remind the church, mm -hmm. like, hey, if there's any comfort from love, I, I want you to be of the same mind, having the same love, he even says, being in full accord of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, right. but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. I came up on a reading in Romans in the Bible reading guide this last week. Mm -hmm. like, and, and he points to Jesus, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ, who, even though he's in the form of God, he didn't count equality to be God as something to be clung to, to be grasped, to be held on to, but he empties himself, mm -hmm. taking the form of a servant, yeah. um, even all the way to the cross. And so this is the embodiment, I think, of what Monday Thursday leads us into is mm -hmm. remembering who we serve and we serve a suffering servant. Yeah. Um, and that's what we are called to, a life of, of servanthood. And, and I don't think we suffer much in that um, in, in our context. Um, we suffer some, but but certainly not even to, to the heights that Jesus leads us and calls us to. So yeah. it's a good reminder of that. Yeah. So, so today's Wednesday, the oldest podcast came out Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow will be Monday, Thursday. 
help us to even get even more specific about, so there's this posture and thoughtfulness that we ought to have about, man, how, how am I loving my brothers and sisters in Christ? How am I um, preferring their needs and their wants above my own? Lucas, have you, have you experienced any kind of like, maybe just even practical, like, hey, I'm going to do kind of one random act of kindness. I'm going to serve my neighbors. I'm going to think about just even something tangible to do tomorrow to even kind of really double down on this idea of, of loving each other. Yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, it's hard. And now we've just moved here getting to know people yeah. in, in a, in the middle of COVID. So, uh, I don't think I've, I don't feel like I have as many natural opportunities. You can serve me past, on Thursday, by the I'll way. I'll do that. I'll you're happy. Like you're welcome to buy me coffee or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, even I mentioned before, like it is kind of connected to like, uh, connected to serving uh, the poor, uh, you know, traditionally within the church even. So mm-hmm. who are those that, hmm. you know, are, are below me as it were in, in kind of society, uh, which would have like, Jesus was seen to be above his disciples, sure. but he, he like humbles himself in, in that way. And so are there people that are, are less fortunate than us? Are there neighbors that, that have needs? I have elderly neighbors or whatever it may be uh, in a way. I think there's, there's a sense of like humility connected to yeah. that um, and looking for opportunities to do that. And so, um, yeah, I think that's kind of yeah. been traditionally that it's not even maybe, Oh, I'm just going to serve my friends or, mm-hmm. or whatever, but like what's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. what's, what's going to make me uncomfortable to do that. And so it might be a homeless ministry. It might be yeah. whatever it may be, but yeah. like, uh, what is it around me in my life that would make me uncomfortable to, you know, put on an apron as, as such and, and wash some really dirty feet, right. uh, metaphorically yeah. uh, in that way. So, yeah. and I don't think we have any shortage of that. Um, even in comfortable suburbs out here, there's yeah. um, plenty of opportunities. And we certainly can use this reminder just in the season. I'm coming out of 2020 and, yeah. and everything that we've gone through as far as just this unity in the world. And then this extreme examples of uh, everything from politics to, I mean, the mass shootings that happened a few weeks ago. Yeah. There's this, it, it's certainly important to remember that ultimately we're called to love one another and uh, find ways to make that practical as Christians. Yeah, it's it's always befuddling to me that Jesus would wash Judas's feet. Mm, like, yeah. why not wait until after you've sent him out of the room? Sure, and then do yeah. that. Like with with and he didn't with the eleven, yeah. but he doesn't. Like it, that comes after the foot washing, and so the fact that he knows he's going to be betrayed, uh, the fact that he knows what's in uh, Judas's heart, and yet he's still going to serve him um, all the way to the end in that way is is a. Uh, I just, uh, I think a powerful example, mm. um, uh, the, to, to walk in Jesus's footsteps in that way. That's good. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing, man. Appreciate it. And, um, hopefully our church just engages a little bit more, is more thoughtful tomorrow yeah. as this day comes up upon us and, uh, looking forward to Easter of course as well. <laughs>